You're listening to the Electronic Media Collective Podcast Network. For more great shows like the one you're about to enjoy, visit electronicmediacollective.com. And now, our feature presentation. Hello and welcome to the movie Graveyard. It is February. February is always a time of love. Now, while I was trying to sit down and figure out what movie we could cover for February, you know, obviously the most romantic film ever made, Halloween 3 Season of the Witch, always comes to mind. (laughs) But I have to be honest, my ass is a little chapped. Like, I've been championing Halloween 3 Season of the Witch as being the most romantic and also the scariest film of all time. And the last couple years, all of a sudden, everybody's coming out of the woodwork to claim now they're suddenly Halloween 3 fans. So we're not doing Halloween 3. I actually picked a a little bit of a gem for my personal collection. This is a very rare film. It's hard to get a hold of, but I got a hold of it. You know, I wanted to cover it, but unfortunately nobody else had a copy. So, you know, I had to kind of think outside the box. And I was thinking, well, you know, this is a different kind of movie, a romantic movie. Why do I want to sit around with a bunch of guys and talk about a romantic film? I really don't. So what I did was I was like, you know, the idea is springing mind. I have to get a woman. What woman will I get to talk about my demon lover with me? And I figured I might as well just get my own significant other. I have a very special guest here today. How are you doing? Welcome to the movie graveyard, your first ever experience. Tell the people your name or your fake name or how you <laughs> want to be known as for this episode. I am Ladybird and the that original name, later yeah bird. that name i came up i've been going by that since before the movie came out but it just so happens that it was sweet kismet because that movie's awesome so anyways lady bird here <laughs> all right so lady bird is here with me we're going to watch my demon lover this film uh legally is only available either on an old ass vhs or on a warner archive dvd which you have to purchase. I don't think any place rents Warner Archive DVDs. Um, we're going to go ahead and get the movie started here. If you have the Archive DVD, as soon as you press play, literally, I, I have this pause on the one second mark. It's a purple background. It says New Line Cinema Presents. This, like, there's no studio special logo, nothing. Like, this shit just really starts rolling right away. <laughs> so I'm going to say one, two, three, go. And if by some miracle you happen to have a, co- a copy of My Demon Lover on DVD or whatever, if you want to follow along, have it one second mark. And when I say go, hit play on your remotes. All right, everybody, are you ready? This is like a live version here because obviously we're not doing this off of Skype. We're doing it from a um, a portable recorder. Hopefully it, you know, it lasts through the whole thing. We don't have technical problems. But anyway, all right, grab your remotes, everybody. One, two, three, go. All right, so... The movie's playing. It's a DVD. Already we can tell it looks like garbage, but what can we do? It's my demon lover. This is all Warner Brothers wanted to give us. So right away we get the title credit, the star of the film, Scott Valentine, my demon lover. This was a big deal in 1987 when it came out. All right, first of all, we cut to a busy city. We see the lead actress. She's actually, doesn't look like she's just standing by waiting for her, like, cue to be called. Because everybody <laughs> else is, like, already walking across the street. She just was waiting to walk across the street. For a second there, I thought she was, like, drinking a bottle of water or something from the van. <laughs> well, like, yeah, like, it look, yeah, she was, like, kind of hovering behind a van, which I wouldn't doubt if it wasn't, like, a production van or something. <laughs> But uh, she wasn't even, like, on the sidewalk waiting for the thing. She was there. Now, here's the worst extra of all time here. Like, see this, like, punk rocker breakdancer guy? Watch. Like, when you're an extra in films, you're supposed to just be in the background and not draw attention to yourselves. Well, first of all, this guy's got outrageous outfit. But watch. Now he starts jumping over <laughs> my, my parking meter things there. He looks like Roger Strong. <laughs> From the Honorable Ring. Yes. All right. Now... At first, like, because there's, like, a little, like, creepy clown robot that waves in either comic. For a second, I thought that was the same clown, but I don't think it is. Because mm-hmm. I don't think they shot this in the same place. I got the feeling when we watched this the other <laughs> night that this took place in New York. All right, let's talk about the lead actress. She just tried to give a biscuit in her mouth to a street <laughs> dog. And then the dog was like, no way, dude, I want this whole bag. 
Yeah. <laughs> and he, then he just disappeared. <laughs> yeah, he just ran away. But yeah, this is, um, or it was, I should say, a New Line Cinema movie. New Line Cinema, when I was a kid, like, they put out all the, like, good kind of garbage that I really liked that <laughs> any, like, young kid would like, you know what I mean? Just these outrageous movies that in no way, shape, or form resembled, um, real life, but, um... When you're a kid, I think that's kind of what you want in a movie, you know what I mean? I think this one's a perfect example of that. <laughs> right. So here we have the the actress here. She's coming home. Like, all these guys are, like, knocking her down because they're moving out. It turns out they're really... These guys, you know, this being New York City or <laughs> Toronto, wherever they filmed it. <clears throat> excuse me. It's, it's, they're not really moving. They're just robbing her. And then, like, I was a little bit confused. What did you think about this? I was a little bit confused when I watched this because... It turns out the main guy robbing her was her boyfriend. Yeah, that's what. When we first saw this, I was, I thought she was just getting robbed, like some stranger was robbing her. But then, apparently, there, that's her. That was her boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. Like, so so far, like I don't know. We're probably like three minutes into this, and um, basically, uh, the main actress. This is really weird, and this kept throwing me off. I thought they were saying something else tonight, night, but the. The main character lady, her name is Denny. Like, yeah. Like, I really didn't understand, like, what was the choice of that. But they, they set <laughs> up that she's, um, like, down, I don't want to say down on her luck. She's just, like, low self-esteem, whatever. And now we're going to introduce her friend who kind of looks like Laura San Giacomo, but is not. Hmm. Kind of spunky New York lady. Who looks, like, 20 years older than her friend. Yeah. <laughs> And, like, we'll get into it, like, as the movie develops, but, like, this this friend character, like, I had no, I don't know, like, I had no idea, really, like, what she, who she was, what she did for her job, because there's a few different things going on, <laughs> and we'll get to it when we get to it, but, um, yeah, this this is the most confusing character, because this, this movie takes a lot of unexpected turns and twists, I would say, for a romantic comedy. Yeah, it's kind of like... Oh, look here. The, I like this part because it shows all those cool old ads. Like LA Gear, LA gear yeah. and that, that Crush poster. Like, it looks so good with all the fruit and everything on it. Like, yeah. it makes me... It, when I first saw it, actually, I was like, oh, I want a Crush. <laughs> and here we're introduced to the male lead of the film, um, Scott Valentine from made famous by Family Ties. And it's hard to imagine because... That's he, what he's from. Yeah. He was so familiar looking. Yeah, he played Mallory's boyfriend. I think yeah. Nick was his name. And uh, this guy was a huge star at the time because of that show. Like, even though he was like a secondary character or whatever, people like really like, you know, glommed onto him and liked him a lot. Yeah. And here he is in this movie. He plays a guy named Kaz who... Keep in mind, he's the male lead of the film, romantic lead, and he's a homeless musician. Dirty as all heck. Very dirty. Like, he literally wears pretty much most of the same clothes. I feel like if you when you watch the movie, you could watch it in, like, that 4D or whatever they do at movie theaters where you can smell the people. <laughs> yeah, you can really smell. Now, right off the bat already, we get a glimpse. He, there was a kind of a classy woman there with some cleavage. He looked at her boob, and then all of a sudden he had demon eyes, so... Yeah. That's where my demon lover comes into play, and this will all be hashed out very uh, shortly. If you're just, you know, you're not really following along with the movie, or maybe you haven't seen the movie, because my demon lover, I think, really the only time it ever got any major play was on videotape, and you know, like when when I uh, purchased this movie a couple months ago, I had always been wanting to see it once I saw that it was available on DVD, because I have vague memories of this movie as a kid on cable or. Oh, we've seen it at the video store, but I didn't remember much about it. Well, it's funny because this part here, I would say even the whole beginning of the movie, to me, they kind of set it up like it's a horror movie. Right. Like, I I don't know. It's Because... I feel like it's pieced into pieces on this because later on, the mood of the movie kind of changes. But at the initial onset of the movie, like, it feels like it's gonna be a scary movie. <laughs> well, it, it has all the horror tropes that you would get out of the, and keep in mind this, at this time, New Line Cinema was most famous for Freddy Krueger movies. Yeah, yeah. So, like, that was pretty much literally the thing that made them a real studio, that, that actually gave them the ability to go out and make movies like this. Um, so, yeah, we saw him on the subway, and then the subway made a stop, 
And there was another lady, like, on the platform that all of a sudden her face was flashed as the train went away. But we never saw him got off. We just, I think we're just supposed to assume, like, you know, like you said, like, the way it's, if this was a traditional horror movie, like, we would think he was the monster. Yeah. And that he was responsible for that lady getting her face ripped off. And, I mean, the way the movie kind of plays is you are supposed to assume that. So here we get into, I, and this is what I was talking about with the friend character. <laughs> Like, I'm so confused. Like, she stops by this place. Maybe she lives in the back because her sister runs this, like, voodoo shop. <laughs> like, another horror trope thing in the voodoo shop. Grigri. Yeah, Grigri shop. <laughs> and uh, they stop there, and her friend stops her to, like, change clothes in the back. So, like, I'm kind of guessing that her friend here, this is her sister's shop, but they live in the back somehow. Yeah. Like, they live in the stock room, or maybe there's, like, a stairway that goes to an apartment upstairs or something. And then I like how people just call her, like, call the friend there and all that. Like, they're yeah. just, like, it's like their house. <laughs> yeah, like, people are calling the Grigri shop, and they're just, like, answer the phone and bullshit in there. <laughs> yeah. And, like, the Grigri shop, like, they got, like, little things of, like, basil and old playing cards. And, like, there's, like, um just a regular old-time Halloween thing of, like, uh, jelly beans in a tube. See it? Oh, yeah. It's like black jelly beans. That's a double head, doesn't it? With a double head on it, yeah. (laughs) And they kind of, I don't know, I feel like they kind of change his character a little bit, too, throughout the movie. Oh, yeah, he's he's going every which way. Here he is, he's on the street, he's harassing some uh, Dixie Carter-looking lady. (laughs) Um, Very 80s, this lady, shiny uh, jacket. Um, Gives him some money for a coffee. Yeah, big poop (laughs) here. He was asking to go... Because he's very horny, like he was like almost practically humping. Oh yeah, Atlanta. there's all these supermodels here on this street. <laughs> yeah, supermodels going up and down New York, New York City here <laughs> at the swap meet. <laughs> yeah, literally bumping this, and everybody mistakes him for a homeless guy because big surprise, he actually is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And here we get into like a little more of the I would I would say like the romantic comedy feeling where we see the women. They're at, like, a singles bar, and there's, like, all these loser, like, desperate people, like, in the background hitting on each other, <laughs> and then, like, I can't remember if this is where the nerd pops up in a second, but... I think so. And you always see these scenes in a movie, and I don't know, like, what this, where this trope came from, but this was always the same in these movies where, like, the friend would be, like, downing drinks... And then usually the main person would be sitting there, like, sipping the same drink all night. Like, I don't know what that was about. And I, I mean, obviously they did it on purpose because she looks at it every time. But that dang napkin hanging from that glass every time she takes a drink, I'm like, take it off already. Yeah, so gross. (laughs) But it looks like they purposely did it because, I mean, there's a hole in the middle of the napkin. Yeah. So they're talking about their dream men. Yeah, their dream men. And uh, I think she, I think because the friend's constantly trying to cheer her up because of the ex boyfriend Robert. Okay, now here's the nerdy guy. I mean, I don't even really remember what his name is. I'll just call him the nerd from here on in. <laughs> but uh, he's he's like a recognizable character actor, you know, like a little bit chubby, just a little bit bald, but not really. Goofy Got looking glasses, yeah. And the guy actually is a great comic actor. Like he, the way he constantly like. Like, all these little tricks he's doing, spilling his drink, but he's acting <laughs> like he don't realize. Like, it's it's all good, you know, comedy hijinks. There's a lot of, like, lookalikes in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> Every time you see somebody come on the screen, oh, that guy looks like somebody. That She looks like somebody. <laughs> and, like, I could be wrong, but I swear, I'd have to look this dude up, but the nerd guy, I swear I saw him play the son of Sam in, a, in like, a TV movie one time. <laughs> David Ruger. I like the I like, look at that guy chilling down there next to the friend that he's like like now he's looking but he's got like a giant sweater like over his and then and then he kind of walked back oh there's a guy gosh. with a mullet kind of looked like Kurt Russell this guy's so gross <laughs> yeah he's trying to hit on women but he keeps I guess he says he has allergies so he keeps trying to like blow his nose on the napkins well and he shit. asked them for a napkin it wasn't right. just like oh excuse me I gotta go clean out my nose or whatever he just did it right then in there and then cleaned his ear with it yeah (laughs) and then our main uh female character denny like she just humors him like they kind of know him like the way i took it was they kind of know him from uh you know hanging out at this bar whatever but she actually feels sorry enough to like talk to him yeah and like he's kind of asking her out but 
she kind of, like, she doesn't blow him off. Like, she kind of just doesn't answer. And then that girl he spilled the drink on looked like Robin Tunney. <laughs> Well, he, but he's still going on spilling that drink. That drink keeps getting more and more full as he walks around. So <laughs> there's that napkin. More. Yeah, the napkin. <laughs> well, like the thing is, is, like when the two girls are talking about their choice in men and all that, like the main character Denny, she her choice is always like just above scumbag. <laughs> like, right. Yeah. <laughs> to her, that's acceptable enough. So she has low self esteem. Like really low self esteem. Yeah, getting abused in all ways. Like this definitely wasn't nineteen eighty seven. Wasn't a uh, hashtag times up era <laughs> at all. No. Now here we go back to Kaz, and I was kind of confused because like sometimes he has a saxophone with him, sometimes he doesn't. But he's homeless, so like where is he stashing this nice saxophone yeah. to where it's not getting stolen all the time? His trash can bed. <laughs> yeah. And here he is. He, he he meets he meets this older guy who like sells like uh, basically snake oil and shit out of a suitcase. Well, he's got a different gimmick going every time we sh- he shows up. <laughs> but it's like a different gimmick, kind of out of the same suitcase. It seems like yeah. so. Well, and two I didn't get in this first scene. Like he just kind of seemed like a normal guy. Yeah. I didn't get. Oh, here he is. Oh my god. Oh yeah. He okay. He. <laughs> Our main character, Cass, he's so horny, he he literally just sexually assaulted a woman, grabbing her around the waist. <laughs> then, like, a female cop happened to be three feet away and chased him away. Oh, here's this woman with her dog in the middle of the street. <laughs> yeah, there's just a lady with a dog in the middle of the street. And it almost actually got run over by a car that was passing me. Well, then she pulled him out of the way, and then she just let him go back into the street again. <laughs> now, here we have Denny walking home, I guess, after the bar. And explain to everybody uh, listening, what what is Denny wearing here? She's wearing a zoot suit. <laughs> like, legit. Like, with the waistline of the pants hiked up to her belly button. Yes. And she's even got, like, the pocket watch hanging out. Yeah, she does. I just noticed that. Yeah. Oh, somebody just creepily passed by. Yeah. And now we get, to, like, the Jason stalker cam here. <laughs> going up, like, going up her ass almost. There's the lady with the dog again. Yeah. Still on the street. <laughs> and now we cut Uh-oh. to a demon hand going down a rail. And then in the background now, oh. it's like all blurred out. The lady's getting all sliced, sliced up. But he was wearing a red jacket. A red jacket. Yeah, you gotta remember red jacket. Okay, now this is like the part of the story where like it started getting confused. <laughs> like I would say everybody in this movie, like all the characters, they're supposed to roughly probably be like, wouldn't you say, in their late 20s. Yeah, I guess so. Like maybe. the girls yeah. and, and Kaz. I think yeah. Kaz is actually younger than the girls, but we'll yeah. leave that alone. <laughs> but now we suddenly, and I get, like, we've established that there's, like, this killer demon on the loose somehow. But now we cut to, like, a, a mid to late 50s. Oh, my God. Yeah, New York <laughs> detective cop. Th- to me, this was, like, the worst casting. Yeah. And now Denny's friend here, the lady who looks like Laura San Giacomo, <laughs> she's waiting in this guy's office. Like, he's fending off all these reporters who want to know about the demon killer. And, like, she's in there, like, all horned up waiting for this old man. I mean, I'd say this guy's probably... At least, I mean, I don't know how old this, <laughs> this guy was when he made this movie, but he looks like he's possibly old enough... To maybe be her father. Yeah. I thought it was strange too when I first saw him. Because they mentioned him in the, I think when they're in the scene in the, in the Grigri shop. Right. And so when she shows up here and they show this guy, I had, I made no connection that that was supposed to be her love interest. Her love interest? And I'm confused, like, oh my God. does she work at the police station? Now, because this is a New Line Cinema movie. Ugh. New Line Cinema. Here we uh, have a, a random fucking Larry Bud Melman cameo <laughs> at, at this house. And, and, and there's like a girl walking out of the bathroom. This is like a health food sh- a restaurant, really. There was a girl just a second ago walking out of the bathroom with like a nosebleed. Uh, Larry Bud Melman, this old guy, he used to always pop up on the um, oh. original David Letterman show. <laughs> He's eating this glop that comes out of his machine and he, go, he just dies. Just like, killed over. He dies like face down. And the lady running the restaurant is Lynn Shay, who is now famous for being an actress from something about Mary and the Sidious movies. <laughs> but she was married to the guy who ran uh, New Line Cinema. Oh, wow. That's so, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so, that, so that's how on these old movies. But what's funny is you think, okay, this lady's like married to like a guy who runs a studio 
And, like, all these little bit parts never added up that her husband gave her. Like, they never added up to anything. Yeah. And then later she, like, got her acting career, like, just separate. Oh, see, there he goes. He's got a saxophone in there. In the garbage. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so... Oh. So, Denny is eating at this nasty glop restaurant. And, like, literally, chaos starts coming out of, like, a, a pile of trash on the curb. It smells the food. Yeah. <laughs> smells her... She... I can... I could not <clears throat> comprehend what the heck kind of hamburger she was supposed to be eating. It's like a tofu burger, but it's, like, really filled with berries or yeah, something. Yeah, it was some funky stuff. And somehow, it had a good smell that he wanted to eat it. <laughs> he literally crawled out of the garbage to come <laughs> bigger... And he's begging like a dog, like he's just like now. This is like a street side, you know, sidewalk cafe. <laughs> yeah. And he, he, yeah, he asks uh, for a bite. This dirty homeless guy, and he literally grabs it and just like, oh, it's the uh, this. Oh, and then he spits it out all over, and he keeps Jesus. spitting and spitting it out like on purpose all over her clothes. <laughs> And she's actually all dressed up this time for the first time in the movie. (laughs) And it's not like he just does a spit take and then the rest of the scene goes on. Like, he keeps talking and there's constantly shit rolling out of his mouth in the scene. Yeah. It's very gross. Very gross, like... And then it's... Yeah, her her, her dress is all stained. It's very gross for what was supposed to be a romantic movie. And somehow she's gonna fall in love with it. She's still gonna fall in love with this fucker. (laughs) Oh my gosh. The one thing he doesn't have, though, for being homeless, the one thing he doesn't have is he doesn't have homeless hair. He's always got, like, <laughs> perfectly quaffed, yeah. like, 80s yep. Duran Duran <laughs> hair. He's got to have something going for him <laughs> to yeah. make her be attracted to him. <laughs> what was that? Pepto-Bismol? Yeah, he just he just has a bottle of Pepto-Bismol, like, in his, in his I guess it's in his jacket. I never even noticed that's what it was. That he drinks, yeah. Oh, my gosh. And obviously he's hitting on her because he's so horny. Like, he doesn't know why he's so horny and out of control, but he is. So he hits on literally every woman. So, like, like let's say, like, the night before some other girl would have fell for his homeless, like, mm-hmm. Lothario hijinks. Like, technically, like, this rest of this story would have never happened because he would have been off with another woman. Mm, yep. But he was in love with her, too. <laughs> yeah. He fell for her. <laughs> he's in love with everybody. Now, here he, he tries to write a check from a checkbook that he stole from, I think, a doctor, he said. Yeah, and some credit cards. And some credit cards, yeah. So, I mean, right off the bat, like, this is totally breaking all the rules of modern movie making and, like, you know, uh, likability of characters and whatnot. She's already starting to fall for him. She's playing hard to get. But in a way, it's kind of realistic, though, because he's like a hunky, handsome, homeless guy who robs people. <laughs> with an earring. Yeah, oh, with I earring. I saw that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Steals checkbooks. Like, it's kind of realistic, though, because you always hear about, like, those, um, those mugshot uh, sexy felons on Facebook and shit that all women go crazy for. <laughs> like, you yeah. know, like, so women do, like, some, uh, you know... Some uh, criminal types. Oh, he's pretending he's sick. Yeah, pretending he's sick, so, you know, she takes him in. And oh, I, and she's so sympathetic to everybody. She wants yeah. to take care of everybody. <laughs> See, but, like, I actually think he was a cho- a good choice to play the demon lover. Because, like, he, there's, like, a lot of times where he's just, like, throwing on these facial expressions. <laughs> yeah. And he's got, like, no prosthetics on nothing, but, like, his teeth look pointy. His eyes, like, look all beady. Like, he does... <laughs> yeah. He does a good job, like... Yeah, he's got the right look. Yeah. Where's she going now, though? She just left her house. Yeah, she's running oh, away from her house. Oh. Yep, he's... Yeah. He's just grabbing and groping her now. Oh, my gosh. This is... If anybody saw that on the street, yeah. you would immediately right. call the police or something. No, she couldn't see it because, you know, his face was turned away from her, but while he was hugging her, his oh, face... Oh, yeah. He kind of turned into a werewolf, and then he had to run away before something bad happened, so... Yeah. Now she's strolling these scary streets again. At night time, yeah. <laughs> oh, there's a so, red jacket. Somebody in a red jacket. Could be Kaz. Could be a, you know. I mean, at this point, you know, like, they just wanted to think, want you to think it's him. Yeah. But, like, I have to say, like, because I, you know, I hadn't seen this movie since I was a kid. And I don't even know if I really ever saw it all the way through. I just remember bits and pieces of it. I could have just seen parts of it on cable or whatnot. But, like, when we watched this the other night, this movie, like, it really took me surprised by how, mm. like, 
the usually like the most focused part of any movie is like the first twenty minutes. Here we have her ex boyfriend just showing up to like literally like pretty much mug her and like beat her beat up. Beat her. Yeah. I, he, that's what I mean. Like the mood of this, the like the mood of this movie changes throughout because it's like there was a horror movie at first. And then all of a sudden it's a rom-com. And yeah. now it's like this like scary thriller. Like this guy's going to like, what is he going to do? He looks so scary. He's going to like kill her or what? <laughs> like, yeah, But well, not I mean, in a like horror movie way, but just more like in a battery way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here's this guy with the hair. What's, who's this? Yeah, there's a guy, a de- <laughs> there's a demon guy with a huge bald spot and completely different hair than what Cass has. And a flat top. <laughs> yeah. It's just, I mean, like every time you see the demon in this movie, it's like, a completely different look. It actually really is a different one every time. Yeah, like literally every single time he transforms. And I wonder why that was. Like, I know that why the consistency was so terrible. <laughs> but what I was getting to before is like usually movies, the first like thirty minutes are the most focused. Like that's what they're doing the setup. Yeah. This movie, like it really like jumps around in terms of just it almost feels like a bunch of little weird vignettes to yeah. open up, you know, and then. You know, I was like, when we're, like, this point of the movie, the other night when we were watching, I was kind of like, where is this going? Like, this feels so, like, sloppy. Like, it didn't, it didn't, it wasn't, like, gelling, like, a real movie. Yeah, that's what I, I was going to bring that up earlier before I got distracted with L.A. Gear and Crush. But, yeah, uh, yeah I was going to say how now a lot of the times, well, there's one specific movie, but um, how sometimes now... Because they're different directors, supposedly, like, the movie scene yeah. put together with different pieces. You could tell a different director made different parts or whatever. This one really feels like that for some reason, even though it's, like, a short, you know, little romantic movie. Like, I, f- I just kept feeling like it was just different. Yeah, like, this almost felt like a movie that had no director, like, at first. Because it, <laughs> yeah. it, it just seemed like they were just had the script, and, like, they were just calling action and shooting shit at first you know yeah but finally he he makes his way into denny's apartment and uh they start having you know like all these movies you know romantic comedies the the guy and the girl they got to start out like hating each other and arguing nonstop. yeah they got to spar yeah build up that sexual tension yeah, which I don't know how much sexual tension you're gonna have with a guy who you know sleeps in piles of garbage <laughs> and is covered in soot. Covered in yeah, he looks, he looks like he's been climbing down. Maybe that's how he got the checkbooks. He was climbing down chimneys <laughs> to rob people. But even so, look how she's looking at him so lovingly, <laughs> like yeah. like he's the love of her life. <laughs> well, I think you're supposed to get the idea that she kind of has. Um, um, like a lost puppy type syndrome. You know yeah. what I mean? Because obviously she takes in all these losers and stuff. And now he's very tired because he just transformed back from being a demon to <laughs> scare her abusive ex-boyfriend away. <laughs> and the joke of the of her getting robbed was that, you know, the boyfriend robbed her and he was pissed off because he didn't want her to throw a birthday party. Oh, that's right. <laughs> and later they revealed, like, well, the birthday party was actually for her because it was her birthday. So she got robbed on her birthday. Yep. <laughs> so she can't, you know, spin, send Kaz out into the rain now because now it started raining. Can't send a homeless guy out into the rain, you know, because, <laughs> like, even though he lives outside, like, all the time and should be used to it by now. <laughs> Uh-oh. He's going to get tempted. Yeah, this is very weird, like, I don't even know how to describe this apartment, like, it's not a loft, it's just like, like, there's like windows all throughout it to different rooms, so it, he's sitting in the living room, and he can see through a window into the kitchen, <laughs> and then the kitchen has a window that you can see, then see into like her bedroom slash bathroom area. So she puts her robe on to go talk to him, but she leaves it open, Yeah, and then she walks away, and then she... She's about to take it off again. So <laughs> she should have just walked out there without the robe. <laughs> but like, don't you? I mean, obviously, this is, um, and I don't think this is a set. I think this is a real place in New York or where they filmed it. Yeah. But like, wh- who the hell would build this where like somebody's like eating breakfast and they can look into your bedroom? Like, it's just <laughs> bizarre. Tell all those like kind of small places are though. 
Oh, here's demon number what two or three or three four. or four. <laughs> well, yeah, he look he looks like he looked like he turned into a werewolf there and yeah. ran out. That's why I wonder if some of these were like a combination of masks that they rented or something. Yeah, maybe. But um, so, yeah. So he 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 turned it because he he basically um the gist of it is when he gets horny he turns into a demon. I can't remember what they call what they're calling the killer. Is it strangler or mangler? I think it's the mangler because everybody gets slashed up by. Him. Here she brings him breakfast, yeah. which consists of some dry toast. <laughs> yeah, and a in a jar of jelly. He just <laughs> spread that shit on himself. And half a glass of orange juice. <laughs> yeah. I did think it was a good um, attention to detail that there was like a little dog bed, or maybe it was a dog or a cat. Oh my gosh! They they didn't say, but like. I can't tell what's in there if it's a stuffed animal, but she said she had a, a pet that ran away the week before. Yeah. So I actually was surprised that they put in the detail of the, <laughs> the dog or cat bed back there. I didn't even see that. Yeah. It looks real. <laughs> yeah, well, like, it looks like there's a dog in there. I can't tell because it's a blurry-ass DVD. Yeah. But it looks like, but I think it's a stuffed animal with a dog sitting back there. Yeah. Kaz, Kaz is running out here. He's got to put on his dirty and scuffed Air Jordan 1s and run around. Is this a conversation where they're talking about being just friends? <laughs> I think so, yeah. <laughs> and and then he's just like, like he's got to play it all. Because like he doesn't understand like why he really like turns into a demon when he gets horny. Yeah. Or why he's horny. So like this thing is like I get he has a curse that when he gets horny he turns into a demon. But they never really understand why he's horny so much. Unless it's just that he just has, like, blue balls because he's, you know... He's basically got to be a virgin, I think. Well, we also made the observation, too, again, like, at the beginning of the movie, it was, like, at the very sight of a female. Yeah. Whether she was, like, clothed or partially clothed, he was going crazy for everybody yeah. on the streets. And now there's this girl that he's, like, really actually crazy about. And, like, he's not turning into a demon every second of the day yeah. <laughs> looking at her. I mean, a little bit when she was climbing into her robe. But, yeah. But, not, I mean, just now, like, he's standing face to face with her. Yeah. And he's, he you know, he's not turning into a demon or whatever. You would think that they're standing so close. There's that tension there. <laughs> Oh, yeah, this is when they're just friends. Yeah, this is the friend. Of, <laughs> well, you know, I never put two and two together. Maybe I'm wrong, but we'll to keep track of it as the movie goes along. <laughs> but it seems like he only turns into the demon at nighttime oh, as well. Oh, okay. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, that ice cream. <laughs> yeah. Here he is with it. He's got the saxophone again. And her air base. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Now, keep in mind this, like, romantic, friendly montage of all these hijinks, you know, running around at the park or whatever. At the adult playground? Yeah, most of it they shot all at the adult adult playground. Whoa. But all these hijinks, like, he's always wearing the same dirty shit the whole time. Yep. <laughs> Finally, we get some nice scenery here of, you know, one of these classic New York bridges you always see in every movie shot in New York. Now things are getting sweet and romantic. Yeah. <laughs> like really, like sweetest day. Oh, that was what they were talking about. Um, there was a shot earlier where they showed the radio when she was taking the quote unquote breakfast out to him. Mm. And they said on the radio that um, Somebody someone had been attacked in yeah. front of the Grigri shop or coming out of the Grigri shop. Right. And it was this, the best friend's sister. Yeah. Who ran the Grigri yeah. shop. That was real subtle, though. I mean, they kind of showed the radio, yeah. but, I mean, you kind of had to pay attention to see that it actually had to do with one of the characters that mattered. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't have, you just would have thought from what was on the radio that, you know, it was just a random person. Yeah. Now, here we have, you know, i say this is really getting more like a horror movie again. Yeah. Because the, the sister who got attacked, she's, um... She like we're actually seeing like a flashback of what happened to her, kind of like she's trying to remember. And it's basically just her scared in an alleyway with the a, a clawed hand, and then we see then we see the demon that attacked her like real close, 
But it's like a demon that like we haven't seen before, so like a horned devil demon. But it's hard guy. to yeah, it's hard to say if it's Kaz or not because he turns into a different type of demon every time he gets horny. So that's also kind of misleading too because he does look different every time. Right. And I guess he does shape shift a little bit later. <laughs> like they stay consistent with the inconsistency. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, this is this is just a really. Strange mishmash for a romantic comedy to have like like this is like some serious uh, tension and drama between the fifty eight year old cop <laughs> and the the thirty one year old um, yeah sexy friend or whatever. It is strange. Oh, this guy again. Cut back to the nerd. He's back. <laughs> he's in a phone book booth. He's uh he's harassing Denny on the phone, trying to get a date still. Talking to the answering machine. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that was a big thing in the 80s, too, was um, somebody trying to ask for a date on an answering machine <laughs> and, like, getting all, like, nervous and tongue-tied. Meanwhile, she's out and about with dirty guy here. Yeah. <laughs> and we gotta say, he always has, like, the perfect, like, four-day, five-day stubble going on, too. Like, he never grows more. He never has to shave it. Oh, see, he's got... Oh, I guess it's the same one. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, it's the, like, it's the same case, but it looks like there's, like, different shit in it every time we see him. I don't think he had, like, the green set up with the cards last time. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, the shit on the shelves was different. Yeah. And I have to say, like, this is where watching it, like, for me, it started, like, becoming more like a real movie here. Yeah, this is when you finally understand that this guy knows what's up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Basically, the uh, the elderly black gentleman here, he uh, you're running all his snake oil. He he also actually does know because he he can spot that this guy is an undercover demon. Like every time he meets him, that's why he gets nervous being around him at first. But eventually, they kind of become buddies here. Yeah. <laughs> and I like I like finally he's just like, you know, you got the the curse or whatever. And they give it like a real corny name. But, um, basically he's like, he's like, he's like, okay, we can like delve into your past and watch a flashback happen. He's like, come around here. He opens up like a little door and he, and he makes a joke about crystal balls are too expensive. So he has like a crystal doorknob here with a piece of a door. I actually thought that was really creative. Yeah. Instead of having a crystal ball. <laughs> so he turns, he turns the doorknob and then like we start watching this flashback. Like happen in the doorknob, kind of. It's it's, it's kind of like a special effect thing here. I'm trying to remember the word they use, Pol Polotsky or something. Yeah, it's like Polotsky. Something like that. And then like, because um, basically what happens is we get the flashback. I thought it was weird too. It's like a flashback of these three boys pushing a, another young boy. Like, <laughs> y'all go in here, do this, like whatever. <laughs> And then there's like a 12 year old girl in there, you know, like all these, I'd say these kids are probably about 12 or something. Yeah. So they started making out and I couldn't tell if it was like, they were like pushing him in there. Like, 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 oh, like you do it. You know, like they were afraid to make out with the girl or, if, or if like they already like took turns with her. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And then the, the girl's uh, grandma comes home and they play, they kind of play it like she's like a gypsy or something. Yeah, because they're Romanian. Yeah, and she shoots like a lightning bolt like onto his crotch and like, like I'd say like his crotch upper pubic area. <laughs> it's like, it's literally like Star Wars like shooting lightning out Pazaski. of his because <laughs> it sounds like possessed, but it's like possessed. That's right. I was, I knew it sounded like a normal word, but they were pizzazz. That's what they were saying. Oh, yeah, gosh, so, it yeah, so nasty. He, he, yeah, he opens up his drawers <laughs> here, and we see Scott Valentine's real pubic hair. <laughs> and above his pubic hair is like a scar where the Pazaski hit him. It kind of looked like a skull and crossbones. <laughs> I thought it kind of like looked in the shape of like a beetle or something. <laughs> So they're talking, you know, how do we get it? How do we get rid of it? And the guy says, you know, the curse is, like, you got to pass it on to somebody close to you or whatever. you like, basically, you got to do, like, a great deed that redeems your soul to, like, get the curse off of you. But then, you know, somebody close to you is going to catch it. Yeah. 
somebody you care about. I can't remember if he said uh, somebody close to you or somebody you care about. Because those two things make a difference. <laughs> well, well, yeah. And uh, he says close to you. And so the whole movie, we think it means like somebody you love. Yeah. But it, can, but there's kind of a hijink at the end, and we'll we'll see how that plays out later. But even I don't know, even either one of those two, like the kind of the way it plays out in the end, I'm still confusing. <laughs> yeah. And this guy reading about maniacs. Yeah, like it's it's kind of <laughs> funny, like you know, you how you see shit in like movies that you don't see for real. It's like, when have you ever seen somebody staying in? Like in an alleyway reading a newspaper, you know what I mean? Standing up against the wall. Oh, this guy's still trying. The nerd is still on the phone trying to get dates. Why are those people running by in the background? Yeah, like, I don't know why. I just assumed he was at that um, singles bar, but I guess he's just... Uh, I guess he's at the just on the street, though. And then this weirdo. Yeah, there's like another old man bum. <laughs> yeah. He actually makes a joke at her expense. <laughs> she's happy to come home to her new man yeah and she's kind of like a quirky whatever like she's got like a kind of like a bowling shirt on that has fire hydrants oh how sweet yeah so all of a sudden he's been wearing these same dirty clothes now he's dressed <laughs> like a fucking clown with like an oversized like green shirt and like a bow tie on with some chef pants. Some chef pants. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I guess he's finally, like, cleaned up now. He, he finally took a shower. <laughs> yeah. He's throwing her a birthday party, like, a week late. And instead of a birthday cake, she gets a pizza with, with candles in it. That's my kind of party. Yeah. <laughs> and, of course, they're always drinking wine. And by drinking wine, I mean holding a glass of wine that has, like, a little bit of wine in it. <laughs> Uh oh, now she wants to start getting serious. Yeah, this is where she starts breaking the friend zone. Like she she did she you know, she decides there's more here than friendship. It's time that they start doing it pretty much. <laughs> With his giant present that he obviously wrapped himself. <laughs> yeah. Takes out. Yep. It's her T V that got stolen. <laughs> but now we cut to the newspaper on the table about the maniac mauler. Yeah. So it's like they never really let you be happy in this movie. Yeah, never. <laughs> There's always some killing that's like right, right by. But even, I don't know, there's like so many like lines within the dialogue too that she, of lines that she says that are like so sad because she has such yeah. like a low self-esteem about herself and it's like, even that kind of was like, you want to kind of get into the re their relationship but then she'll say something it's like oh you're just doing this because you <laughs> don't like yourself so sad yeah so she she starts sucking on his ear yeah. now oh and, that's so gross <laughs> and, like there's some bad special effects movies but there's some good ones so, like there's a quick shot of his ear actually like yeah. shriveling up suck sucking into his head yeah that was surprising it's cool too because like they flash it so fast but like you could still obviously see what it is yeah. So he's got to take a cold shower. So he literally jumps in the shower. <laughs> you know, she doesn't understand why he's acting so crazy and, and whatnot. she's so mad. So she decides to jump in. <laughs> yeah, if you're crazy, I'll be crazy too. <laughs> We're meant to be together. Did you notice her earrings? Like, one's a little dog bone, and I think the other side is like a dog or a dog house or something. <laughs> yeah. She's almost like a pet detective. <laughs> oh, it's a dog. <laughs> no, it is a dog. So here basically is where, you know, the the crux of the movie, the rest of the setup. He's going to come clean that, you know, he got the Pazoski on him. And he, <laughs> you know, he, he can't do uh, anything to whatever without getting worked up and... Uh, Turning into a demon. And she promises she crosses her heart. She's not going to be mad about whatever he says. Mm -mm. That's wrong with him. Hey, his hair is actually all flat. <laughs> yeah, it's wet. It's like he got a haircut. <laughs> now, this is 40 minutes into the movie. And I gotta say, if this was like 
a modern movie. I feel like this scene would have been happening like 15 minutes into the movie. Yeah. <laughs> but I think he actually does a good job acting here. Yeah. I, I guess we should take a second to talk about Scott Valentine. He was a big star. Family Ties. Um, Family Ties, he started in 85. This movie came out in 87. So this is pretty much like the first big thing he booked mm -hmm. after, you know, whatever. <laughs> and it's only his, his only major starring role that I know of. Like, I know he's in some other movies later and some B movies in the 90s. But he was actually, believe it or not, a really classically trained actor. And before he got um, Family Ties, he was up for, I want to say it was Gardens of Stone. It was like a real serious early 80s drama, or hmm. I guess mid-80s. And then he got Family Ties. And he always kind of, because he, he had to play such an airhead guy on Family Ties, like, he always felt like it was like... <laughs> Like, not not so much that he was being wasted, but, like, he didn't think it was right that he was making so much money, like, basically doing nothing as an actor, you know? Yeah. And, like, I think he wanted to do more challenging stuff, and, I mean, if you look at his, like, IMDb, like, I mean, he stayed busy for a while, but I don't, I don't think he got to do, like, all that serious stuff that he wanted to, because he was doing, like, a lot of theater and stuff, too. Yeah. And it looks like right now he's pretty much not acting anymore, like, he has another career, um, finally they start making out and they're kind of like, well, damn it, you know, we'll just deal with the demon hijinks when they come. Well, here's my thing. Like, she's pretty much naked. I mean, yeah. and I mean, she's showing as much skin as she has, but he wasn't all turned on by her like no. he was with the women on the street. <laughs> yeah. And then pretty much that back and forth they just had was like, he was telling her, come on, get me all hot and bothered and like. She's like, well, maybe I will. But it's like, well, don't you think she looks hot with the way she's got her body, like, all out everywhere yeah. for you? <laughs> like, and you guys just jumped out of the shower. Yeah. I like her slippers. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of remember those type of slippers. Yeah. You know, ladies. But, yeah, the, the latest update I have on Scott Valentine is he actually works with a funding company mm. where they... um. The, they try to find new companies to invest in. Oh, that, like the angel thing, no? Yeah, it's kind of like that, but like all his stuff, like the angel investors or whatever. Yeah. Like his, like his, his thing that he works with is he only invests in um, uh, companies that work on renewable energies. Wow, that's so, cool. So yeah, it, it's like at least he's doing good, you know, positive work now. You know, there's, he doesn't have a sad story or anything. Yeah. All right, now here we get into, like, the demon <laughs> transformation, which I'm sure was inspired by American Werewolf of London. First, his butt grows uh, big. Then, literally, like, his spine, like, pops out. <laughs> and then, like, his head, like, starts really, like, um, expanding. Oh, my God. Oh, here's then, demon number five yeah, or six or whatever. Totally. Now he's, like, an old man, fat, bald <laughs> demon. Like, literally fat with, like, a rubber gut on and everything. <laughs> and I almost wonder, like... And I really have no idea because I, there was there's not too much behind the scenes information on this movie and this DVD don't have no special features. But I always wonder if it was really Scott Valentine <laughs> and all this rubbery ass makeup, or, yeah, or if they just had guys come in and film this shit real quick. And then she's calling him over like a dog. <laughs> yeah, that before she was like, well, you know, let's just make out, have sex, see what happens when you turn a demon. Now she's begging for him to jump into the cold yeah. shower. I didn't understand that. She's like, I can take it. Let's do this. And then now she's like, oh, I hate you. <laughs> he really looks like a kind of like hook nose, witchy kind of Uncle Fester type character now. Well, it's funny because, like, I mean, I watched, you know, years and years of, like, Buffy and Angel, and there's, like, so many different demons that they have on there, and I swear, like, every demon that pops out in this movie is, like, some version of one of those, yeah. um, <laughs> those shows. <laughs> like, I, they all look so familiar to me. <laughs> so the nerd is still at the phone booth trying to call, and finally she picks up the phone and starts talking to him. But, like, th like... Scott Valentine or whoever is playing this demon now, like like the way he starts acting like really weird and his voice in this scene was like Ooh. Oh yeah. Like I it totally seemed like a different like character. Like, yeah. 
Like, and even the, I don't know, the demon itself, like, it shows up so different from, like, yeah. what you would think. So he, like, he did his thing where, like, he climbed out the window because he was too horned up. I mean, like, what is, it, you know, we're, <laughs> we're supposed to be led to believe that he goes out and mauls for his sexual gratification. But, like, it's almost like he has to climb out the window and jerk off or something. Because <laughs> like, then he always comes back. And then, like, where is he going? Everybody's going to see him the way he looks. Right. It's New York City. And, like, they've literally established that anytime you walk down the street in New York City, there's 20 people walking by at all times. Like, <laughs> somebody, yeah. somebody has to see this demon, like, running around everywhere. So now she's saying she's going to take it into her own hands because her sister was attacked. Yeah, this is the friend. She's going back to her middle-aged cop lover who... Just wants to sit around all day being old and dorky and <laughs> wearing these big glasses. Which, to be fair, like, if a demon is slashing everybody up and it's not a demon all the time, it, you know, turns back into a human, it would be pretty hard to ID him, I guess. Yeah. Even if you did have witnesses. Well, but they think he, they think the killer is just a regular guy, though. Right. They don't want to believe that it's something supernatural. Yeah, that's kind of like their folly why they can never possibly catch him. Oh, because in this scene, she's telling him that when her sister was having those memories of what she saw, she was able to see him too. Almost like a twin or something. Yeah, so she's trying to tell the guy, like, you know, it's not human what you're looking for. <laughs> And he doesn't, he thinks she's crazy, basically. Here, they're back at the adult playground. Yeah, Denny's at the adult playground. <laughs> you know, now she, like, misses uh, Kaz because he turned into a demon. And, and she's watching these, this guy and this girl run around the park <laughs> oh. and kiss. And, like, the, this guy and girl really literally fall into the dirt and they're just making out <laughs> and, like, look like they're getting ready to bone on the playground. <laughs> and, like, in the broad daylight. It is an adult playground. <laughs> it is. Oh. Now here she's walking by that health restaurant place, which is, I saw the sign this time, it's called Kelpatopia. Oh. Only she would be happy to see a guy digging in the trash. Yeah, she, oh. run, she runs up <laughs> thinking it's Kaz, but it's just some other dirty, all the dirty homeless guys have like the same dirty, like, <laughs> Raylon magenta blazer in this. And the poofy curly hair. <laughs> yeah. I'm still not clear at all what Denny's supposed to do for a living. I was going to ask that earlier when she came home. I was like, where does she work? Does she work at the Gree Gree shop or like what? I don't know. It's just, it's so, does her, her friend, I don't know what her friend does. They haven't really shown her at a job. Not at all. She catches Kaz trying to sneak out. But what's he doing there? I can't remember. <laughs> I think he was just getting his stuff because he had like a backpack that he was like. He's she somehow convinced him to go on a date. <laughs> yeah, they're they're at a bar. Oh, this is when he's gonna show his true colors. Yeah. <laughs> this is kind of like from this point on, like the movie finally kind of kicks into high gear and starts getting like a more, you know, streamlined direction. I'd say. And things start to get picked up a notch. So he's not wearing that dirty white t-shirt anymore, but he is still wearing the dirty blazer. Yeah, he finally got out <laughs> of the dirty t-shirt, but now he's still wearing the dirty blazer. Like, it, it's really not much of an upgrade. So, this being your first uh, exposure to the great Scott Valentine... <laughs> Who was just like, I think you're far too young to really remember, you know, his heyday. Like, what, I understand this movie's kind of weird and all over the place, but just your perspective, like, what did you think of him as an actor? I liked him. I just wish that the character had been, like, more consistent. But, like, even though they show him, like, being all dirty and stuff all the time, like, I can see the, the you know, the attraction of putting him as a lead a romantic right male cause it, when you look beyond the dirty clothes like he is a cute guy yeah I was gonna show you a picture of what he what he looks like now 
Pretty much looks the same, just with gray hair. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's just, like, you know, watching this, it's not like I was ever a fan of him, but, like, I had remembered him because the hysteria around him was so big. Like, I had remembered him as, like, being, or, like, just being bigger than, you know, here he is in his hunky heyday from oh, Family Guy. Oh, see, yeah. Yeah, you can see he's, he's a hunky a guy. guy. But, like, I just remember him as, like, being around more, but he really didn't do that that much. I mean, he has 62 credits as an actor, but not a whole lot. Like, he did a lot of, like, um, like uh, TV shows where he was, like, on one episode, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, guest starring. Yeah. Here he goes. He's about to sh- show it. Yeah. What he's really all about. Uh-oh. He's starting to go crazy. No other memorable movies, though. Yeah, this is what happens. Her friend actually takes pity, I guess, and is just hanging out with the nerd here. So the nerd and her friend sit down at the table to talk with them. And her friend, all of a sudden, who really hasn't been dressing that... She really hasn't been dressing slutty this whole movie, I don't think. All of a sudden, she's got this shirt on where her just boobs are, Uh. like, in full view. And, of course, Kaz gets super horny like he was in the beginning of the movie. Denny gets jealous. But her friend, like, she sees his demon eyes and starts to realize. Like, she starts thinking, obviously, Kaz is the demon slasher guy yep. who attacked her um, brother. Or, I mean, her sister. So, Denny saw him react this way. And you would think, at this moment, she'd be like, oh, forget you, dude. You suck. But nope, she's like, oh, let's go away from here. Let's go home and get away. <laughs> yeah. And here her friend goes to the Grigri shop to get this magic dagger that, like, they kind of half-ass set up before, but not really. There wasn't much, you know, put into it. Just supposedly this is the de- the dagger that will uh, kill we'll demons. demons. Yeah. yeah. Now he's in trouble. <laughs> I guess I should have looked this up before, but, um, to see what the friend's name is. Sonia is the friend's name. Oh, okay. I had no idea what it, what her <laughs> name was. So, after she goes and sees her man oogling this woman's boobs. Yeah. Now she wants to go home and make out with him. <laughs> yeah. What's, it's just kind of, but I, but I guess she understands the curse or whatever, so... Yeah, but, I mean, in all the scenes where he's shown himself as a demon, like, she gets all, like, upset at him about it. Yeah. Oh, no. He really <laughs> he really transforms into, like, a really gross... And I say this version of the demon now is, like... And this was the version that they always showed, oh. like, in the previews and stuff. <laughs> yeah. He's almost like a gargoyle demon, huh? Yeah. With the horns and shit. Yeah. Like, small horns. But he, he's, like, an old... Like, crusty, like, rotting, wrinkly, just nasty gargoyle-looking <laughs> she, demon. She's all grossed out with him. <laughs> but she's making out with him. I know. <laughs> Let me look at it. I think, for, I, think for, I think for me, and obviously, like, because he's a demon, he has some supernatural power, so shit's starting to, like, shake around yeah. the apartment. I think for me, like, what's grossest about this version yeah. of the demon is, like, the hair. Like, it looks really <laughs> gross coming out the back of his head. <laughs> Oh, I thought that was cool with the glasses. Flying. Yeah, stuff's flying around. What's what's <laughs> funny is he's scared too. I know. <laughs> Why are you scared? It's your demon powers, motherfucker. But he's never dealt with that before. I think it's supposed to be like he never got this far having sex. Yeah. I mean, they're not having sex, but you know. He never got that worked up. Yeah. Oh my gosh, she's going to explode or yeah. something. <laughs> Oh, oh. I, he, he acts like the alien's gonna pop out I of know, his chest. I know. <laughs> oh, and the neighbors are screaming. Yeah, Quiet neighbors. Down. What's going on? <laughs> oh my gosh! He starts running around. Oh, yeah. he's banging his head in a brick wall. Now he backs oh. up so he can get a good running start. Oh my gosh! He runs. Oh. He runs and rams his yeah. head into this brick wall, and it makes his head like. Pop down into his body. That's actually a really cool effect because it looks like it's really him doing it. Yeah. His head goes in. <clears throat> and now, oh. now he pulls his head back out and he's like this ugly, like <laughs> almost like a Jim Carrey Jim looking Carrey guy. From Cable Guy. <laughs> From Dumb and Dumber with the haircut. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> All righty then. <laughs> oh, yeah, he, he had a buzz cut in Cable Guy. Huh? Yeah. And, and for some reason, they dyed his hair black in Cable Guy. I never understood that. But yeah, this like Jim Carrey type. But isn't it strange how much he looks like that Jim Carrey character? Yeah. <laughs> like it's weird. And all of a sudden he transforms into a, a old lady, which I couldn't. I can't remember if it was supposed to be her grandma or just her mom or. I old thought it lady. was supposed to be her mom. Yeah. Look, he was saying, "You're tearing me apart, yeah. Lisa." And this is where it becomes like the thing. Yeah. <laughs> this is where oh, it becomes that like stuff is so gross. Yeah. She bashes this old lady in the face. The Ugh. the lady's head like explodes, and there's like mustard pasta inside <laughs> that goes all over. It, it's actually a lot like Halloween three when they they killed the um the robots and they had that gooey yeah. yellow shit come out of yeah. them. At first I thought it was like peanut butter, but then yeah. like it's too thin, too thin, too yellow. Yeah, this was. I thought this part too was kind of random. <laughs> But. Well, it becomes the, the now it kind of becomes like the thing where these tentacles come out of this headless body of this old dead woman yeah. here, and then the, the, for some reason the the dress is ripped open and you see this bruised, battered, kind of fat old lady. Brazier. Yeah. <laughs> oh, now it's gone. <laughs> and smoke's coming out of the body. It's very bizarre. Like this is like the one sequence where I I just didn't get it at all. But I mean, I mean, as far as it, I mean, it is random. But like, I don't know. Like, I think it's cool. Like the way they, you know, that body is there and it's like moving around and like, yeah. it's just. I don't know. I love effects like that. Like, and that, so I mean, cool. that's the thing. It's like they kind of overuse CGI. It's like, you know, it's not often that you see practical effects overused like that. But like, at the very least, even if like it's something bizarre, like it is in this movie, at the very yeah. least. Somebody had to sit there and physically build it, you know? Yeah. And the mechanisms inside of oh, it yeah. to make it do all that stuff. Yeah. Oh, and now he's back to normal. <laughs> now he's back to normal. And he's wearing the dress. <laughs> but I didn't understand, like, they both have, like, black soot on their faces now. Like, there was, like, an explosion, <laughs> but there really, like, wasn't. Yeah. And now he's wearing the old lady's dress. Like, I totally... Oh, I didn't notice, too, that the body of the lady was wearing those tennis shoes. <laughs> yeah, she... Yeah, the lady was wearing his shoes. They look so funny. <laughs> yeah, they look like a, a cartoon bomb went off of their faces. <laughs> they just need the hair sticking up. Yeah. He has Well, it. he does have it. Yeah. <laughs> That's too funny. So now she wants to try and save her friend because she yeah. saw the demon eyes of her boyfriend. But really, she just wants to draw him out. So um, she wants to draw her actually out of the apartment so then she can go in yeah. and, and kill him with the demon dagger. So, like, this movie's starting to get really, like, actually, like... Action-packed. Yeah, action-packed <laughs> now. And now she's a hero. <laughs> yeah. A demon fighter. <laughs> it's funny. And he, keep, he keeps acting bizarre. <laughs> uh, like an old lady, almost. Like he's still acting like the old lady, kind of. Uh... Now, here, the, you know, the nerd is, like, along for the ride here because he'll do anything this hot woman, you know, asks him to do. But he's wearing a red jacket, too. Oh, yeah. I actually didn't notice that. And it's a bright red jacket, too. Yeah. Huh, that's funny. Everybody mysterious in New York has a red jacket on. <laughs> it's to mislead you. Shh. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, look, there's a hand. I know. <laughs> A hand plays a part in this movie. <laughs> but it's kind of funny how, like, slowly these scenes play out. Like, they really go into detail of them wiping their faces off. Yeah. Her friend climbing up the fire escape. A giant knife. <laughs> I know. It's really like a big, um, like a, almost like a vase with a blade <laughs> sticking out of the bottom. It's not a very practical weapon. <laughs> oh, guess jeans. <laughs> Whoop. She almost tripped. <laughs> that was like another thing too in 80s movies <clears throat> that took place in New York. Everybody was going up or coming down fire escapes. And this guy being a creeper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what was that? At first I thought it was like fake teeth, but then he like blew him like a whistle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it looked like fake teeth. Oh, there's the fake hand. 
Yeah, all of a sudden he's got a demon hand. He's scared he grabs demon hand. So the filmmakers have let it out of the bag now that he is the other demon. Well, not really, because it's just one hand. Now he, this is demon, what, number seven or eight? <laughs> but he's just like an old, dirty Jesus uh, in this one with like nah. lettuce in his hair. Like, why does he have lettuce all in his hair? Lettuce? Oh, yeah. It's like shredded it's like lettuce like cabbage. from Subway, yeah. <laughs> like, I, yeah. I like those wings. <laughs> yeah, it grew wings for like a second and then it went away. But, uh, yeah, see, he only has a hand. Yeah, the nerd guy, he just has a demon hand. It's very rubbery looking. And, uh, he chloroforms a Denny and drags her away. <laughs> so, basically, now we're getting into the action part of the movie. Now the heroine is in danger. Yeah, Chaos sees Denny being dragged away in the car. <laughs> Meanwhile, Sonya is so, wow. so, so, you know, obsessed with trying to stay her. There was a great stunt there where Kaz actually jumped all the way down and laid on top of the car. <laughs> I like how the nerd's like, get off, get I know. off the car <laughs> with my demon hand. <laughs> this is actually a great stunt too, the TJ Hooker moment. Yeah, I was impressed by this. Yeah, Kaz is <laughs> on top of the car where he landed. Sonya grabs onto the hood of the car because she's trying to kill Kaz. And then the nerd's driving through New York City pretty fast too. Yeah. And these two stunt people... Which are pretty, the stunt people, they blend in pretty well. Yeah. And then we get like close ups, you know, that were probably on a sound stage or something. But, you know, it's a great action scene of them hanging onto the car as it flies all around. What are you talking about? It's a car going fast and there's two people on top of it. Right. They were really in danger. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, they were. But I mean, like, like, look when it cuts to the close up of them. Like, I mean, I'm sure it's probably like rear projection background, but it don't look fake or nothing. Yeah. Not like shit now where everything looks obviously green screen. <laughs> yeah. So they speed by a cop car where the, uh, I should look up his name, the, the guy who sells all the snake oil and shit. <laughs> he's, in, he's in the back of the cop car. He's finally arrested for shilling his snake oil. <laughs> yeah. Oh, his name was actually Fixer. Yeah. Yeah, like how his thing said the fixing and stuff. Yeah. His name is Fixer. Mm-hmm. But, um, let's see. And she's talking, she's having a conversation with the people in the, in the cop car. Yeah. <laughs> this movie grows $3.922273 million dollars in the box. Of, so almost $4 million for this movie. So yeah, Fixer was in the back. He got arrested for something. Well, they're still rolling around on the car. <laughs> yeah, and the cop, the, the cop car was trying to chase them, but it crashed. And now here's a oh. here's here's a great stunt too. Like the nerd drives the car oh into a lake, and then the two people on top of the car go flying <laughs> off into the lake, like for real. Yeah. Like there was no, and it was done real time. It wasn't like they were on wires or yeah. slowly fell in. Like they went flying. Now they're going to have a sexy wet t-shirt fight. Yeah, like her boobs <laughs> weren't coming out enough as it is. <laughs> yeah, they should have given this lady some, like, at, at, you know, um, oh. what do you call it, stunt work classes or whatever. Because, <laughs> look, she's just using her boobs as flotation. Like she, can't, <laughs> she can't do nothing. She did stab him just a little bit. And you can kind of see, yeah. like, the blood bag under her shirt, I think. <laughs> can't tell if that's what it is. And she's surprised because that knife is supposed to kill demons, but he's not affected by it. Right. Because cause he's, I think it's because he's like possessed. So this is their moment of realization that he's not the demon. <laughs> yeah, as they watch their friend Denny being dragged away by the other guy. Into the giant creepy castle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't understand why there's like a, a giant Romanian castle <laughs> and like... The middle of a park in New York City. <laughs> now the old the old cop shows up. He's taking her to his dungeon. <laughs> and like I was thinking of it the other night. We were watching it. I was kind of going back and forth in my head. And tell me what you think about this. I almost think the lady who played Sonya. When he put her down, this nerve. When he put her down, he kind of groped her boobs. That was weird. <laughs> but um. Jeez. Like, I don't know, like, I, do, I don't know if I fully bought into the, the, the romantic chemistry between Denny and Kaz in this, like, the, 
Like, I, I was thinking maybe if they had the lady who played Sonya, if they put her in the lead, maybe her and Scott Valentine would have had more chemistry, but I don't know. I got the front. See, there's the fake hand. Yeah. So you still, he's just a human guy. Yeah, just <laughs> pretending. Yeah. He took off his rubber hand. and. <laughs> but it's weird that he was, like, pretending to be a demon when, like, I don't know. I was so confused. Like, is he really still a demon, though? I mean, at this point, as far as we're in the movie, he was just using that hand to throw people off, I assume, as to what he was doing to make it look like it was some sort of animal that was attacking the girls. Right. But at this point, we still just think he's a a nerdy guy. (laughs) Evil nerd. Yeah, with somehow a lot of money that owns it, and he owns a castle. (laughs) Because it looks like there's like a, almost like a Freddy Krueger hand back there with like knives on it. Yeah. Like a demon hand that has like sharp things on it. Like the impression I got of this little laboratory of his (laughs) was that he like was into making like, you know, mechanical hand and stuff because he had that one and then he, that one looks like it's a work in progress. Well, I mean, he clearly was at the very least dressing up like a demon. We know for sure because Sonya's sister saw him yeah. as a demon. Yeah, that doesn't... It's not really clear because, yeah, in that memory that she had... I mean, that... He looked like a full-out devil demon. Yeah. <laughs> but on here, we don't... He, It's like it kind of doesn't match because he just still looks like the nerdy guy. Yeah. But, uh... I don't know, like, I think the way they kind of set it up at first, where, like, they could, they needed to just stay friends, because otherwise he would, like, turn. Turn, Yeah. Like, I kind of just, and then, I don't know, just her whole thing of, like, how she has such a low self-esteem, and, like, it kind of, and, like, she's falling for these guys that don't really seem like the greatest guys, because, I mean, he seems like a homeless guy, really, for, (laughs) I mean, even if he... I mean, in the reality of it, oh, they're going to start making out now, so he'll turn into his demon. Yeah. <laughs> like, he basically needs to hawk out and turn into a demon so he can scale up the side. And this guy's happy for him, the fixer. Yeah, yeah the fixer guy. Basically, <clears throat> and this is where, like, really it comes into question, is, like, basically her, like, him and Sonya basically have to have sex now, like, full-on sex. For him to turn into a powerful enough demon <laughs> that he can fly up to this castle and save Denny. So in order... Like, this is a pretty great scam right here. In order to <laughs> save Denny, he's got to bang the hell out of uh, oh, well, she's in her best it. friend. Oh, and she's my best friend. Yeah. <laughs> and they literally roll away into a freaking swamp <laughs> to have sex. And it's just like... But, but like, that part there where they were having a conversation, that's why I was wondering if they would have had more chemistry because, like, like, the part where, like, Sony and Cass have to team up to figure out how to save Denny, like, I don't know. It seemed, it seemed like they were more interested in each other than he was in Denny, actually. But but the F- Sonya character, she's supposed to be, like, saucy and racy. Like, yeah. Denny's character is supposed to be, like, timid and, you know. So I don't see how she, how Sonya would have, you know, the actor, yeah. would have fit into the Denny's character to be all pathetic yeah, and she, she wouldn't have been pathetic. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it would have been a slightly different movie. Then it would have been like, yeah. you know, Sonya would have been like, the way they played her was like, like it would have been more like she would have to bang the demon out of him or something. Yeah. But it's just like... <laughs> it would have been a completely different movie. Because <laughs> she was banging the cop, and then the cop was right there and saw them starting to bang. And this was all very... I think this movie's probably like PG-13, because there's there was never any nudity. They just kept showing her cleavage like all yeah. squeezed up. Let me look. Yeah, the box says PG-13. But like, I mean, I don't know. It's just weird how <laughs> much these two... Like, she was into it. She wasn't like... Yeah. I gotta let some nasty demon bang me. Like, she wanted to get fucked by the demon. So, yeah, here he comes with his wings. And I actually really like these special effects. I think we get... Yeah. I think we get a quick kind of uh, stop motion, like, winged serpent flying oh, yeah. away right here. There you go. <laughs> but it's pretty good. It's like, they kind of do it in some shadows where you can't see. But see, she's doing it because she thinks she's... 
having sex for the greater good. Right. <laughs> Not because she's into him. <laughs> but she was like all excited. It wasn't just like, ooh, this demon's climbing on me. Well, but they set up her character at the beginning of you know, the way Denny talks to her saying, I wish I was like you with men and all this stuff because yeah. she's super saucy. <laughs> yeah. She's quite comfortable with her sexuality. No, this is definitely not a Time's Up uh, model of, uh, <laughs> you know, like like he's rubbing this, the dirt is rubbing this dynamite all over Denny's boobs and hanging her off the side of this building. He's got some legit TNT. Yeah. <laughs> some wily e. Coyote dynamite. <laughs> and it's funny too because, yeah, like I always knew about TNT from like the cartoons, but he yeah. actually says the whole name of what it stands yeah. for and I was like, oh, is that what it means? <laughs> Yeah. I've never known what that stood for. <laughs> yeah. And then with his bunk mat lighter. <laughs> yeah. And then we cut to, like, there's actually a sniper with a huge rifle trying to get up into a tree so he can shoot the nerd. <clears throat> but in, you know, Kami hijink fashion, he can't. And she's getting mad at him for sleeping with her friend right there instead of worrying yeah. about this dude with TNT in his hand. <laughs> But I mean, he had to turn into the demon or yeah. else they would die. Now here comes a nerd. He's he lights this this dynamite. He's flipping <laughs> off the cops. Oh. Then the sniper oh. shoots at him. Kaz grabs the dynamite. This is actually some good comedy hygiene. I gotta give them credit. <laughs> yeah. This makeup looks good, especially from a little bit of a uh, distance away. So the sniper sees his face, and he knows it's the Pazowski. <laughs> yeah, he does. He knows he says the word, a Pazowski. <laughs> yeah, because he's some, the sniper guy is, like, I guess the same ethnicity. <laughs> so Kaz is supposed to throw the dynamite oh into the gosh. lake so it can go off and not hurt anybody. But he throws it too hard, and it goes to where all the cop cars are. He blows up all the cop cars. Whoops. I have to say, that was a good gag. I didn't see coming. I know. Like, I didn't really know that this movie was going to have that kind of a budget to, like, blow up all these cop cars, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so the whole time they keep hiding this uh, this dagger, Sonya was hiding under her shirt. Now Fixer is hiding under his shirt. And, like, I don't get why they thought they had to hide it from the cops so much, that dagger. I think, well, with her, I think it was just because she was trying to find a place to put it on her tiny body. Yeah, on her giant. Because it's so giant. And then him. He I mean, it's a weapon, it. really. Yeah. <laughs> For him to be seen with something like that. Now, the the, the cop that, that Sonya dates, like, like, they're on a raid. They're after a dangerous criminal. And he's he's carrying her a civilian into a crime scene, holding her by the hand. Like all of those people yeah, are fixers in there, <laughs> except for the cops. Obviously, like like this movie has been like pretty wacky, but like it this it's really getting like cartoon levels now. Yeah, like in a good way, intentional way. Like yeah, like I like the first twenty thirty minutes. I didn't know if this movie's gonna you know be worthwhile or whatever, but like it, I have to say, all this shit at the end really makes it memorable. It's funny, you could tell that's him, too. Especially yeah. with that face that he made after he threw the dynamite onto the cars, where he's like, Ugh, with yeah. his mouth wide open. Like, you could tell the way he was moving, it was him. Yeah, and they're, they're all climbing on the roof of this castle. Which I was impressed by. So here's gonna be the moment of truth. Yep. Oh, he's mm. Superman. Yeah, the nerd blows, <laughs> The nerd ha does have some superpowers. He blows cold breath on Kaz, which blows him against the... It blows everybody. Like, really, everybody's yeah. like... Oh, oh, he's actually blowing him off the rooftop. He's blowing him up. Up, uh, yeah. <laughs> which, I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. I guess he could have fallen down. Yeah. He saved himself. Yeah, Kaz is having a demon heart attack right now. <laughs> The nerd is just, He's laughing. just laughing. Yeah. <laughs> He's just playing jokes to be scary. <laughs> oh no, he's getting down to the nitty gritty. Yeah. <laughs> Gonna start doing some magico. Oh. <laughs> oh, he's blowing on his thumb. <laughs> Talk about some wily <laughs> coyote. <laughs> wow. Talk about special effects. His oh, whole cheeks are blown up. Oh. Oh. <laughs> He blew There's up. There's the devil now guy. He's the so he really was the, and that's what threw what? me off was, 
why would a real demon be wearing a rubber demon hand? Why was he joking around so much if he was a real demon? That's which which he say. was. That's what I was saying. Like, it's so it's confusing. Mostly, yeah. But now the little kind of fat, round nerd is like a big, tall, buff guy. <laughs> like, I almost think this this could have been an early Brian Thompson role. <laughs> Now here he is, he's shooting lightning bolts in the Kaz, and Kaz kind of transforms from his um, gargoyle-looking demon. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, Sonya's flashing her boobs. I mean, not literally flashing, but kind of rubbing her <laughs> chest out. But he didn't, why was she doing that? <laughs> to try, I think to try to get him to turn back into a demon, because he was like losing his demon power, he's slowly transforming back to human didn't work <laughs> no this is a pretty elaborate makeup on the other guy though he has gold fingers he has like snakes coming out yeah like it's actually like a oh. real character are the eyes supposed to be skulls <laughs> they look like it they look like little heads so this is kind of like the whatever because like the big fight yeah Cass has to fight him oh he broke his back <laughs> he did Cass has to fight him as just a regular guy he's not a demon anymore he has to fight this giant demon. Oh. See, that's why that's why I like <laughs> I like uh, about eight, you know eighties movies or whatever. It's like they're more legit. Like you know, the beginning of this movie it seemed kind of cheap. Like they were just always walking around the streets and stuff. But the end, you have all these costumes, all this makeup. Yeah. There's oh. Yep. Fixture throws Kaz the dagger. <laughs> Move out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't he just push some police <laughs> woman out like bitch gal the way? Oh. Stab his foot. <laughs> yeah, it's the stab him with the dagger. But I feel like this evil demon guy, he really Ooh. screws up in that he keeps toying with Kaz. Yeah. Keep giving him every more and more chance to beat him. <laughs> He's cheering for him. <laughs> I know. The cops mad that everybody's cheering for him. <laughs> They're Beating. saying, no, he should just walk away. <laughs> yeah. Lots of for the big budget of uh, Force Lightning here, like yeah. the Emperor from Star Wars. <laughs> Finally, Kaz stabs him in the heart with a dagger. Oh. Kaz gets Ooh. thrown, he gets flying Dang. across comically. Oh. <laughs> hanging off the side of the castle. <laughs> this is very exciting for a comedy. It is. <laughs> comedy, rom-com action thriller I, I feel horror like, movie yeah i feel like maybe they were inspired by ghostbusters with this movie in terms of just having all these supernatural hijinks <laughs> sonia's excited yeah <laughs> she's so safe. happy i'm telling you like i think i think sonia's like in love with him <laughs> oh gushy blood yeah the demon guy he pulled out the dagger and he blew up and turned like all Yay. good 80s <laughs> You know, things he turns into a rotoscope animated <laughs> like lightning bolt demon whatever thing flying around. He's dead. Everybody's, you know, saying their final words walking away, you know, like, oh what a crazy adventure. Like literally twenty cops just witnessed the <laughs> supernatural battle. And like I like how like nobody like like they're just walking away. Leaving Denny and Kaz there, like, nobody's like, hey, you gotta come down the station to make a statement. Like, nothing. They're just like, oh, that shit's over. Well, they're not even like, oh, did you see that? Yeah. Oh, man, that was crazy. <laughs> like, they're just like, okay, we're done. Let's walk Yeah, out. like, everybody, like, even the street oh, cops. Now he's ready to go to prom. Yeah, Kaz, <laughs> his dirty, like, shit that he wears turns into, like, nice clothes all of a sudden through magic. I, I guess when his clothes turned nice, that was like the curse was lifted. Okay, so the thing went away, and it's just them two by themselves. Mm -hmm. So where did it go? <laughs> where did what go? The demon or whatever, his curse. The Pazuki? Yes! Well, remember, remember they said like it will go to somebody close to you or whatever? I know, but there was nobody around. Just her. Right. But like... But like Look like you gotta see like who ends up getting the power passed to them. I know, but it, he said that the thing is if whoever's closest to you. But I wouldn't say he was cl the person that gets it is close to him. <laughs> yeah, like the big reveal here in a second. 
is like like here he sees the the Pazuski's gone. Look at my penis. <laughs> yeah, look at my dick and my <laughs> pants. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, but but we see it's Fixture. But Fixture was the one who threw him the knife. So. Oh, but the knife thing didn't have anything to do with Kim getting rid of the. Oh my gosh, I thought he was trying to take her clothes. Off. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's what I thought when we watched the other night. But the knife thing didn't have anything to do with his curse. No, uh, yeah, it's it's very random. But I mean, that's what <laughs> happened, though. I mean, that's what I was kind of confused with with the yeah. with his thing getting lifted. <laughs> well, there's even kind of the worry that they're afraid that Denny might get the curse. You know, but here we see Fixer has oh, the demon powers. Oh, got it. Yeah. <laughs> And he gets horny, and now he's running after the female guy. And then he, he's getting ready to do do something. Uh, times up there, but there's there's <laughs> there's, there's there's still power with uh, Kaz because he makes the doors automatically open there. Yeah, so. th- I noticed that too. Everybody has a little bit of demon power in this movie. <laughs> demon power goes around. Everybody have a good time. Well, otherwise that wouldn't be her demon lover. Exactly. <laughs> The movie ends with them kissing and we're watching them through the uh, the windows here. And for some reason he wants to turn all the lights on. Yeah, she's trying to turn them off so she can bone. <laughs> he, he wants to be a wacky, like, comic relief guy. He wants everybody to see their silhouettes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because if you pull the drapes down or the blind, whatever it is, and then you leave all the lights on, then everybody can see your romantic uh, silhouette kissing <laughs> outside. And they lived happily ever after. And you can really see them mouthing it up. Yep, they're mouthing. <laughs> now the movie ends. Whoa! <laughs> now we cut to the wacky montage. Like, the movie ends with, like, a montage of all his best <laughs> weird demon moments. Like, it's really just, like, um... How they show the actors at the end again and then say they show their name, but like they really show like a lot of highlights. <laughs> so yeah, so like I mean I remember Renee this. Renee Paquette is Denny. <laughs> yep. Denny looks just like Renee Paquette. Jimmy Kimmel's dad. <laughs> Shecky as Charles. Shecky Kimmel as Charles. <laughs> See, and, like, they just show all the stuff with Sonya being a slut. <laughs> There's Sonya's 62-year-old boyfriend. <laughs> like, I'm sure he could really hold that. Alan, Alan Fudge. Alan Fudge. Oh. Larry Bud Melman. <laughs> like, literally, literally, he had, like, a two-second cameo. <laughs> Here we go, <laughs> Fixer. They're replaying him becoming the demon. Arnold Johnson is Fixer. <laughs> But yeah, there's a, I mean, obviously the Burly Cop, wow, what a great uh, title. Who was Chip and BB? Yeah, I don't know how any of these Bum people on Denny Street. Yeah, I remember who that guy was. Young Kaz. Oh yeah, in the flashback. Leggy redhead. Anemic counter girl. Yeah, there was somebody who played the, le- <laughs> somebody played the leggy redhead. Miguela. Yeah. <laughs> But there, there was a lot of these movies back then. There was one that was like, it wasn't like a madcap comedy. It was taken more a little seriously. I can't remember the name of it, but I used to see it on cable all the time. There was actually a movie about a guy who, um, like, a, like a beautiful angel woman crashes in his, like, uh, <laughs> garden or whatever. And he takes her in and uh, they fall in love and stuff. And, like... Like, I don't know which one came first, that movie or this one, but this was kind of like the opposite, where it was like a demon, and it was like all madcap and goofy and stuff, so. I definitely think, you know, as far as like a movie that was released, like, you know, this wasn't like a trauma movie, it wasn't like a super schlocky whatever, like, it was actually put out by, you know, New Line, respectable movie studio at the time. I think it's definitely one of the most, uh, and it, I'm sure it is meant to be shocking and weird and whatever, but I think it's one of the most original ideas for a romantic comedy type, you know? Yeah. And it was a little rough in spots, especially early on, but, I mean, I don't know. It, it, like, it actually ended up being better than I thought it was going to be. 
It was interesting. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely different. And it kind of like, it was all over the place. Um, and some parts definitely had like that Porky's vibe to it. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> you know, that you would get like almost like zapped with uh, Scott Baio. Uh, <laughs> how he, he, he got like some demonic powers. But but that was like a very R-rated movie where he was just like making every girl's shirt fall off and shit. Oh my God. <laughs> Whereas like this was very much, you know, PG-13, but it was it was trying to be more for like guys. And I felt like this movie was really trying to appeal to both Guys with the wacky humor and women with the romantic storyline and all that. Yeah, and the girlfriend, like yeah. the best friend and all that. Like, you can always tell that, like, a movie is trying to appeal to women when it's, like, a love thing. But, like, the woman in the movie, like, isn't really hot. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, it's just, like, a, like an average, normal looking, you know? She has to be relatable, you mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> down to earth, I'd say. I think that's the best way to put it. Relatable the way Ray is in Star Wars? Well, Star Wars... <laughs> I'm not even going to give him that, but... I don't think Ray is very relatable, because, like, she doesn't emotionally connect with anyone, if you notice. Like, uh, what's his name? Uh, Finn has a crush on her. Like, she she doesn't even acknowledge... She, she's too busy being powerful and womanly. She can't acknowledge anybody's affection. Relatable, like, Captain America when he's not wearing his helmet and his, his uniform. You see his mouth acting, yeah. <laughs> yes. Or like Spider Man when he takes his mask off. <laughs> well, filmed at Rinmar Studios, Hollywood, California. So I guess they didn't really film this in New York. There was a um, at the when they were on the credits earlier with the stunts. It said L A stunt team and New York stunt. Oh yeah, team. maybe they maybe they did the street stuff at the uh, in New York and then shot all the indoor stuff at that studio. But yeah, Demon Lover. I think it's, I really recommend, you know, we'll be putting this uh, uh, podcast out a couple of days before Valentine's Day. I really recommend everybody, you know, hit the hit the Amazon or wherever, uh, wherever <laughs> fine archive DVDs from Warner <laughs> Brothers are sold. <laughs> Order this up, you know, get get a bottle of champagne, play with, oh your, play with your woman, you know, listen to us. <laughs> Guys, I recommend you watch this maybe the night before Valentine's Day. <laughs> not on the day of. <laughs> not the day of. Not for the big event. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine some guy handing like his girlfriend or wife like, the, bo- <laughs> the box of chocolates and the DVD of My Demon oh Lover. My gosh. <laughs> Unless you know that your woman really freaking loves you and your wacky taste of movies, I suggest you watch it the day before. <laughs> watch it the day before. <laughs> Just to close it out, because it seems like the back has a pretty, the back has a pretty funny description of the movie, and I think it's like a good way. The tagline they put on it, well, the tagline on the actual poster, the actual poster is. Him holding Denny, and then, like, he's got, like, a demon hand, and then what? there's some kind of weird, like, yarn, fuzzy tail coming out that, like, he never had in the movie. But it's, like, the tail's, like, curled over his head, around his head like a halo. Yeah, it's very <laughs> bizarre. Uh, on the poster, it says, she was a dream come true. He was a good reason not to go to sleep. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> In the back says, it's a monstrously funny romance. And this is the description they put. Scott Valentine, TV's Family Ties, and Michelle Little. So I guess they don't put anything she was in. I guess she wasn't in anything big. <laughs> and Michelle Little discover that true love has many faces and occasionally claws. <laughs> oh my god. In the frightfully, frightfully funny romance, My Demon Lover. The happy-go-lucky but lonely Kaz, Valentine, is looking for love when he meets Denny Little. A cute, kind-hearted gal with the uncanny ability to attract attract stray pets and -and down-and-out boyfriends. Oh, my God. Denny is sure she's met the man of her dreams when she sweeps Kaz off the streets and into her heart. Oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) But it's not exactly a match made in heaven because Kaz has a slight problem. 
Every time he's turned on, he becomes an animal, literally, complete with horns, fur, and sometimes a tail. Oh, and maybe some claws. <laughs> will Kaz ever be able to shake this curse? And will Denny finally bring out the best, not the beast in her man? Who oh came up with all these shitty puns? <laughs> Find out in this monstrously hilarious film. That's a great description. I think that's the best way to sum up this movie. Hey, that would wrangle me in better than any description of any current movie now. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it for the Valentine's Day special. I hope you enjoy My Dying and Lover. You know, the thing that's actually kind of interesting and what you wouldn't think about is sometimes like we get comments either on Facebook or on iTunes. That's another thing, guys. If any of you guys have an iTunes account or whatever... Uh, do us a favor and leave us a review. It really helps us out. I don't think we've had a review in like six or seven months, wow. maybe longer. So if you, we have, I think we have eighteen reviews up right now. If you guys could go up there and leave us a review, really appreciate it. But sometimes like people will say like, oh, I listened because of this episode or whatever. And now I like the show, and it's like, yeah. it's like the the real obscure ones that like you know like someone's a pick an obscure one. And I'll be like, oh, I don't. Don't know if anybody will like know this movie or like it or whatever. I know sometimes I'll ask you like, "Oh, what movie are you gonna do for the show?" And you like say this movie, the movie title. I'm like, "What? Really?" I was like, "Are you sure somebody's gonna listen to that?" Yeah, and it's like, and if you watch the um, besides like all the like the more recent ones we did or the big name ones, like uh, like like right now a lot of the older ones that are getting downloaded is like one of the most downloaded ones is when we talked about the movie Clue, wow. which was never a big hit at all. It was really actually, I think, kind of famous for being a flop. So, yeah, so if you're one of those people who actually like My Demon Lover and you, like, you know, came to the episode and discovered the show, that, so so thank you. Like, I, re I really like people, you know, because I find a lot of podcasts that cover, you know, obscure films that way. So if you came here because you're a My Demon Lover fan, more power to you. <laughs> I really enjoyed the movie. Um, you know, I hope you guys, and I hope it inspires other people to go. You know, maybe get, maybe pick up the DVD, or, or I think you can rent it digitally as well in different ways. You spend three bucks on one of these services to watch this movie. I don't think you'll be disappointed at all. So everybody, thanks for listening. Hope you had a good time. What do you think about being here on the movie Graver? Did you have a good time? Yeah, I did. It was a fun movie to review because <laughs> it yeah. was so silly and all kinds of crazy stuff happened, so it was cool. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next time in the movie graveyard.